as rates reach 5%, things will get worse for the economy. In an effort to reduce persistent inflation, the Federal Reserve is generally anticipated to increase its benchmark interest rate once more on Wednesday, taking it above 5% for the first time since 2006. However, doing so runs the risk of causing a ripple effect through the economy and financial markets, escalating recessionary fears and worries about financial stability in the midst of a persistent banking crisis. According to Joseph Brusuelas, chief economist at RSMUS, financial stability is subordinate to the effort to restore price stability at the time. Step aside, in an effort to control inflation, which decreased to a 5% annual rate in March but is still well above the Fed's target, interest rates have been promptly boosted. Investors anticipate the central bank will announce today's announcement of a further quarter point hike followed by a halt. That would enable decision makers to evaluate the effects of the rate increases made thus far, which take time to have an impact on the economy and financial markets. The effects of increasing borrowing costs have already become apparent. In March, the United States had a 3.5% unemployment rate. However, data released Tuesday shows that the number of job openings that month fell to its lowest level since May 2021. The number of layoffs increased by roughly 250,000 to 1.8 million, the most since December 2020. According to Diane Swank, chief economist at KPMG, businesses have so far kept up a brisk rate of hiring, aiding in the absorption of laid off workers. However, that will change as businesses struggle to obtain credit, forcing them to reduce spending and investment. The Fed forecasts an increase in the unemployment rate to 4.5% this year and 4.6% the following year. According to Swank, the level of unemployment would indicate a downturn in the economy. She stated, I find it astounding that the U.S. economy has proven to be so resilient. We also understand that policy has a lag and that the worst is yet to come. Investors are still adjusting to the sharp rise in rates, which last year caused a massive sell-off in U.S. government bonds and stocks. Banks that were not fully ready have taken a beating. The demise of First Republic Bank this week and Silicon Valley Bank in March was made possible by the changing environment. There may be more suffering to come. A surplus of vacant office buildings during the pandemic has made the commercial real estate sector's troubles worse. This industry is particularly vulnerable to rising borrowing rates. The Fed is aware that it has raised rates to an uncomfortably high level. That is, in many ways, the key point. In order for inflation to decrease to a more manageable level and remain, there, the central bank wants to damper Wall Street's animal spirits and restrain demand for products and services. The former CEO of the U.S. Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, Sheila Baer, however, told CNN this week that she is concerned about this aggressive approach because it may put undue strain on the banking system and the economy. She has maintained for months that the Fed needs a break. Baer, who oversaw the FDIC during the Great Recession, noted that pausing doesn't imply you're giving up the fight. It simply means you're taking a break and evaluating your accomplishments to date. J.P. Morgan Chase, JPM, has once again rescued the banking system by acquiring a failing bank, increasing its size as the bank crisis intensifies. Elizabeth Warren is quite concerned about this. The Democratic U.S. Senator worries that by approving J.P. Morgan's acquisition of First Republic Bank, federal regulators have exacerbated the too-big-to-fail issue. In her first on-camera interview, Warren explained the First Republic disaster to CNN on Tuesday. What happened here is because a bank was under-regulated and started to fail, the federal government has helped J.P. Morgan Chase get even bigger, she said. Background After regulators closed the major regional bank, J.P. Morgan agreed to pay the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation $10.6 billion to purchase the majority of First Republic. The J.P. Morgan arrangement safeguards each and every depositor of First Republic, much to the satisfaction of investors and bank customers. The American taxpayers will ultimately be at risk, according to Warren, if one of those massive banks, J.P. Morgan Chase, starts to falter. It may look good today while everything's flying high, said Warren. According to Warren, First Republic should have been able to be purchased by a different bank. There were other bidders present, and each one was significantly smaller than J.P. Morgan Chase. According to Warren, it's critical to consider the impact on competition and work to maintain a more diversified financial sector. Let someone person purchase this bank. Let someone else manage those resources. Not yet finished, the sale of First Republic was mediated by federal regulators in the hopes that this would stop the banking crisis. It's possible that was wishful thinking. California-based PAC West Bancor, Puchupi's stock fell 28% on Tuesday, while Western Alliance, WAL, in Arizona had a 15% decline. Lyft is struggling, while Uber is doing well. 
which rapidly expanding tech companies are struggling as the economy weakens and financing rates increase? Not Uber, whose shares increased 12% after it disclosed first quarter profits on Tuesday that exceeded Wall Street's forecasts. Compared to the S&P 507% growth, its stock has increased by 48% year-to-date. Detail after detail in the first three months of the year, the company's revenue increased by 29% to $8.8 billion from the corresponding period in 2022. Investors rejoiced at the indication that consumers are still spending money on food delivery and ride-sharing, which encouraged them. Uber CEO Dara Khazrashahi declared, Uber is off to a strong start in 2023. The business is well positioned to increase its competitiveness in important markets despite higher interest rates and more difficult access to finance, he noted. Lyft hasn't fared as well in this competition as Uber. It said last month that it would reduce its employment by 26% in an effort to minimize costs. The business just hired a new CEO and announced that its founders will step down from their management positions. Lyft releases its findings on Thursday. Uber has greatly benefited from its decision to engage in food and grocery delivery throughout the pandemic. That company is still expanding. Additionally, Uber is developing it as a platform for advertising.